When I'm encountering a patient with, with status in the hospital, one of the biggest challenges is that they may already have been in status for quite a long period of time before they get to me. And we know increasingly with good evidence now that the first one to two hours are the critical time in terms of intervening. So very often you've already lost a lot of that time, particularly in remote areas or resource poor settings. The second problem is recognising it and getting the diagnosis right because we know a substantial number of patients actually don't have epileptic status epilepticus but present with non-epileptic or dissociative what used to be called pseudo status epilepticus and if we over treat them with medication then actually we're doing real harm uh, but on the other hand you can't afford to delay treatment if it is epileptic status so that's the uh, another big challenge is recognising it. So in terms of addressing the first issue which is how long it's been going on before it gets to the hospital then a lot of work has been done and in most uh, of the developed countries now uh, paramedic and out of hospital services have paradigms and treatment paradigms so they know to get in there quickly with a, a non-intravenous or an intravenous benzodiazepine even before they get to hospital. Um, for patient groups uh, for individual patients who we know are at risk of recurrent status then family members and carers will similarly be trained and there's an increasing array of non-intravenous benzodiazepines now so bucomidazolam is very widely accepted both in adults and paediatrics uh, and there are a range of other formulations coming along as well so that's really helped I think with out of hospital treatment. In terms of recognising it uh, that's a very big challenge because that's difficult even for you know, qualified doctors, and we know that it's very expertise dependent. It's, it's a lot of its pattern recognition, and the more time you've spent looking at patients having fits and seeing the difference between them and dissociative seizures, the better you get at it. So that's very expertise de you know, dependent. Uh, and no matter how much training and education you do for the emergency medicine physician or the uh, paramedics or general practitioners, they're just never going to see as much as experts do. Um, so that, that's quite a challenge. Um, there are technological studies underway to look at whether there would be ways of recognising the pattern of movements and things to sort of detect these reliably. Probably the simplest thing is actually people just to video it. So if, you know, if they feel they have to go on and treat it anyway, then treat it anyway. But if you video it first, that makes a massive difference for the expert coming along a few hours later trying to sort out what, what's been going on because you can see what was happening. Uh, and I think as we get more we're already getting more specialists in the emergency room, even in the UK where we've got very few neurologists per head of population, we're much more involved in acute neurology than we were five or ten years ago, so you're more likely to get an expert whizzing down to the emergency room to have a look, um, or available at the end of a phone to look at a video, you know, on call sort of thing. So I think telemedicine could really help in that area.